who are likely targets to go into sexual immorality. Clearly, there is nobody who does not know that it is wrong. I don't think that's where the trouble is. Almost every culture discourages wife swapping. There are rules against it. Against it. And yet, and the word of God is clear in Exodus 20:14, thou shalt not commit adultery. In other words, you will not have sex outside long-term commitment. And Hebrews 13, 14 is encouraging you to keep the bed holy. You know, but we still continue having people involved in adultery. You know. Um, and I think that's a very important thing. We talk about adultery, we are talking about um, married people who still have sex outside their marriage. Fornication is referring to sex between unmarried people. Um, or having sex with somebody who is not yet married. That's still part of um, sexual immorality. But uh, when you talk about that, we are also including homosexual sexuality. Um, whichever, whichever area of it you want to talk about. So in real, we are talking about immorality. We are talking about any sex outside long-term commitment. You do not enjoy the sex act until you first of all commit yourself to somebody else for life. So you first of all wait, then you can have sex. That's why you cannot, you are not, you are not allowed even to be involved in pornography or masturbation, because those are a way of enjoying sex without uh, long-term commitment. If somebody is not willing to commit or to uh, long-term, what he has, he is having for you is not love; it is lust. Anybody who loves you will want to stay with you. Or maybe even self-love. They want to manipulate you. They are clear. They have no interest in you. But they want to use you because they have a need. A sexual need. And I think that can be quite a problem. So therefore, when we talk about sexual immorality, we are talking about zero grazing, like they say in Kenya. That means you... You are like a cow that cannot go outside a particular area. You, by your marriage, are tied. That's why they call it tying the knot. You are not allowed outside it. And you know, this thing is very interesting that people are still involved in morality despite the frightening HIV. You know, why? Who are the kind of people that end up being cheated? I think the first one is people who listen to devil's lie that says God's standards cannot operate today. In other words, if you tell him the Bible says so, says, but the Bible was written a long time ago. Even God has to update his standards. How can it operate today? The moment you get into that kind of picture, Assuming that there are things changing and that God's word is no longer relevant, it leaves you free to break every tradition, every um, control that has been put for the good of mankind. So it's a devil's lie. And in this discussion, we are trying to identify people that are prone to end up in sexual immorality. People who don't take God's word that was written in the Old Testament and the New Testament as relevant today, are likely to end up lost. Because even if they read it, they say it's not applicable to me. That's one of the easiest ways to get you off the line, to make you doubt that the word of God is relevant to you. But you know, you need to understand that the God we believe in, he is from eternity past to eternity future. What that means is that there is no time within him. Because if you are dealing with eternity, even a million years is still a very short time. So he knew 
even as he gave instructions to the writing of the Ten Commandments, he knew it could apply even years, years later. So if it's really God, God can see into the future. So therefore, when he gives instructions, they can be applicable then and applicable in the future. But the moment you feel like those, um, those standards do not apply, you open up yourself to other things. That's why one of the things I've found which is very interesting is many people who are Christians and do not take God's word seriously when it says thou shalt not be drunk with wine, that says in Proverbs that the one that alcohol is for those who are dying. So much information about alcohol and why it's not a good idea to be taking it. Although it does not condemn you if you have to take it for whatever reason. But it, it discourages you from it having it except like like Proverbs that one is saying, if you are dying it may be a sickness like um, it's being used as a medicine. I think Timothy was also told the same thing by by Paul. So alcohol itself is not condemned, but you cannot use it for entertainment and for leisure. It will create its own problems. I still find some people say, but I can control myself. So what happens? Even somebody who all his life, because after he got born again, never touches alcohol. Now in his 40s, he says, I'll take a little, <laughs> you know. But you know, you never take much until you take a little. So a little is a way of inhibition. Earlier, you could not imagine yourself taking alcohol of any nature, whether wine or beer or whatever. Now, the moment your inhibitions come down to feel, ah, that doesn't apply to me. I have seen one case after the other that the people who remove the inhibition about drinking, for good reason, because they are saying the Bible doesn't quite condemn alcohol itself, and I'm not going to take much. Head up, caught up in, prim, in extramarital sex. I don't know how the two relate, but my guess is that the moment you start seeing God's word as not applicable in one area, it will still not be applicable in another, because it will be the same thing. No, I'm just taking this girl out. I'm not having sex with her. I'm just having time out. And she's not your wife. Oh, next time in Mombasa, I'll go with so and so, but uh, we're not going to have sex. Obviously, the moment you never have sex with someone whom you did not have a meeting with, so the moment you start removing the inhibitions, feeling like God's word doesn't apply to you, you are too clever, too bright, too rich, too handsome, too something for it to apply to you, you have started the downward spiral to where you may discover yourself involved in immorality. So to me, that's the first kind of people that are likely to, that are likely to end up in, um, in sexual immorality. People who do not take God's word as applicable today to their life. Another one are people who talk about safe sex. They argue that um, uh, I will not get HIV, I will protect myself, and nobody will discover. We're just doing it secretly. My wife will never discover how will she be hurt by something she does not know. You know, even this idea of safe sex, that you, that you, you, you cannot uh, get HIV because you are using condoms. Condoms, at the very best, have 90% uh, success. And, um, okay, 90% to prevent pregnancy, but also 90% to prevent um, HIV, getting HIV. But let me ask you something. Ever heard of the game called Russian Roulette? Where you have five holes and you only one of the holes do you put a live bullet. So when you shoot, there's only 20% chance that you can kill someone. Would you tell your son to go there, you are just playing games with him, and tell him, chances of, of get, being killed, very low. There are five holes, only one of them who has a life. What are the chances? There are very low chances. Go there, my son. Let me try. I doubt there are many fathers who tell their son to start there 
with a live bullet in one hole. And even with such a low possibility of shooting your son dead, <coughs> you do not want to dare. How come you talk about safe sex when there's still 10% 10, 10 chance that you are going to get HIV, that you are going to get pregnant, that you are... When you teach, you, you, you lie to yourself about safe sex, my friend, I think it will be very important to understand you will soon be immoral, immoral because you feel safe. You can try. Nobody will discover. You know, after all, now I'm so far away from home. Little understanding that we do not, when you have sex, it's a crime against your wife. But it's a sin against God. And the God we sin against when you are immoral can see you. If you are far away in uh, South America, uh, you are an African. You can't see anybody ever getting to report to your wife. But God is there with you. And I think that's something that you need to understand. That idea of safety where you feel, ah, nobody here, here, nobody. How would anybody ever get to know it? If you start, if you start, um, the reason why you are not immoral is because you fear HIV, is because you fear pregnancy, is because you fear being caught by your wife. The moment you feel you are in a safe place, you will end up involved in sex. The reason why you do not have sex is because you want to honor God. It may also benefit your marriage, but the most important thing is you want to honor God. And God, you can never hide from God. He can actually see you. The third the type of people that, uh, that are likely to end, up, to end up with immorality are people who say, hey, but everybody is doing it. Who doesn't do it now? In fact, if you are a girl and you are... Um, and you are in your thirties, and you have never had sex. People just laugh at you. You must, there must be something biologically wrong with you. Whereas God is praising people who are virgins in their thirties and forties. Culture is telling them there is something wrong with you. How could you manage? No, no, it's not possible. Like I heard of a story of somebody who was who was teaching a an organization about the dangers of HIV. And started by saying, I know all of you are involved in it, so that's why we want to know how to manage it. A, a, a Christian girl said, no, 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 don't, don't assume everybody. I said, don't pretend. There are no, there are no people who are who, whether married or unmarried who don't have sex even outside marriage. And I thought, what audacity. We have come to the level where it's very abnormal not to, not to be immoral. My friend, if you're in that way where you, you feel everybody is doing it, what happens? You start finding it much easier to do it. Because after all, even my wife should understand everybody is doing it. Especially the richer you become, the more likely to feel that kind of entitlement. So, you, you know, that idea of everybody is doing it, is because people expect you to be, to be, to be, to be, to, people expect you to be like everybody else. But all of us are unique. God created us unique. And in the day of judgment, nobody, we will be not group judgment. It will be individual. And when HIV is going to destroy you, it will not destroy a group, it will destroy you. The fourth reason why I think the fourth type of people who end up with this um, immorality uh, are people who are given condoms free. Can you imagine a parent who notices the son is now 17, he's at the age where he's, he could very easily be attracted by girls, so she, the mother secretly goes to his room and um, places some condoms this is a boy who is a Christian boy and has chosen to be a virgin until the wedding. But now the mother, somebody she trusts, somebody who's, who, from whom she has copied her, her, his values, places condoms. Her interest is 
since I know you are going li likely to end up having sex, at least do not get HIV and do not get a girl pregnant. Wow. You know, that boy would have to be a very strong boy not to end up in sex because then we say, ah, yeah, you mean when my mother says it's okay. Because you can't give me condoms if you don't think it's okay. That will lead somebody into early sex because the parents are giving, dishing out unsolicited condoms. And that can create a predisposition towards getting to become involved in sex at a very early age. The fifth type of a person are people who do not know how to manage peer pressure. Ever heard of the saying, dead fish move with the current? My friend, sometimes, earlier it used to be boys who would move girls, but now girls are themselves working on boys and pushing them, oh, you, you are a man, what kind of man are you? I'm here with you and you're doing nothing. What kind of a man? You really must have a problem. In order to prove you're a man, you end up sexually immoral through peer pressure. But surely you know you are a man. Why, do, does, does, why does anybody else need to tell you you are? You know you are a woman. Why does anybody else need to tell you you are? But I think the sixth type are people who come from unstable homes. Studies have shown, one study after the other, that if you, have, if you come from a stable home with a father and mother committed for life and it's been a stable home, you are not likely to end up immoral. In fact, a study showed, one study showed that 60% of women who married as virgins came from stable homes. Another study showed 80% of preschools was teenagers, teenagers involved in sex, came from unstable homes. 80% came from unstable homes. There's still 20% who, despite being brought up well in a stable home, still went wrong. But 80% came from divorced homes or even single parent, but not single parents that are good, single parents who are not very good. Or People who are, not, who are not divorced, but they are in a very unstable marriages. So it means that if you are looking at this topic of who are likely to end up in sexual morality, each one of the people I'm mentioning needs to watch out. And God is able to help anybody. It doesn't matter which group of the groups I'm mentioning. God is able to help you not to get involved, but you need to be aware. The seventh group are people who kind of are sex addiction. They believe they can't do without sex. In fact, for them, they believe that sex is oxygen. And you know, if you can't, you can't do without sex. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 is saying, it's okay not to marry. In other words, you will not die. Sex is not oxygen. You can do without it. But when you start thinking that, <laughs> what will happen to me? Nothing. Nothing will happen to you. Many people... Marry in their forties, fifties, sixties. Some never marry. Many of the many of the church activity, church transformation that was brought in Africa was brought by single women who came as nurses or came as various as doctors and never got married. So I think it's important to understand if you believe sex is is, is, is a must. One of these days you will feel, surely God understands. If only you had given me somebody to marry, I will not do it. But now I have nobody to marry me. What can I do? So you start arranging to have sex. But Second Samuel chapter 11 talks about David. How did David end up taking Beth, be a shepherd to, Beth, shepherd to, to bed? He was idle. At a time when kings go to war, it might be summer, he just stayed home idol and um, that idleness is what really got him into trouble similarly my friend have a busy life 
Even rest should be something in your diary so that you don't just move far without a plan in your life. The moment you have time that is idle, you have no idea what you are doing, there's a big likelihood of you ending up in sexual sin. That is the eighth type of a person. The, the ninth person is in Second Peter 2.14. People whose faith is not stable. Um, so they, they, it will be difficult to stand. They rely on other people's opinion. <laughs> they are like what the late Bishop Kivenja called the now cabbage. Still remember him talking to us in 1976 at the University of Nairobi. I've not forgotten the now cabbage. And, and when I went to, when I went to, finally went to, to Uganda to see the now. That's something I was very keen on. Something floating on top of the water. And it can move in a direction. It depends on the wind. When the wind draws the left, it goes to the left. It has no direction. It just keeps moving. And it's not stationary. It doesn't have roots that hold, help it to hold. My friend, if you don't have a step of faith, a commitment to walk with God, and watering that faith by having quiet time and growing, my friend, you are a candidate for immorality. Job chapter 24 verse 15 is talking about people in corners. In other words, areas that are unknown. So you need to understand you should not be found with a, with a person of the opposite sex in a compromising situation. You want us to trust you, but do you trust yourself either? If you trust yourself, do you trust your, 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 your partner? So people who are careless by allowing, they are, they, maybe they are a pastor and you are allowing a woman to come to your office, there is nobody else around, you are playing with the fire. People who go to compromising situations without realizing the dangers. And like Joseph who was near in a room when Potiphar's wife came, he didn't negotiate. The situation was such that it's not a good place to negotiate. There were just the two of you, of them. So he he left the woman holding her his uh, his coat and disappeared. If you don't want to do that, so you will be with people in compromising situations, you are likely to end up in sin. Uh, people who do not care about it. You know somebody, your boyfriend comes to visit you and you are in a rural place and you allow him to stay until the evening. Where are you hoping he, he is going to go? To where? Oh, but in my room, my house has two bedrooms. So I will sleep in one and you sleep in another. And you are just the two of you in that house? Job 24.15 is advising you otherwise. Then in First Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5, it's talking about other people where, where the spouse is not available in bed. That kind of a person where the wife or the husband is depriving him or her of his sexual rights doesn't mean he has a right to become immoral. But you need to watch out. You need to know that once you are used to sex, then it's deprived and your wife is still there but refusing, you become more torn towards the possibility of you being involved in sex. Obviously, God is saying you don't have to. You cry to him and he will help you. Have you ever heard of the saying, if you are not near the one you love, watch out, you love the one who is near. Let me repeat. Be near the one you love. Otherwise, you are likely to love the one who is near. So if your wife or your husband is not available for sex. All you need is somebody else to, to come al along and you have a harder time. So that's why you should run away more than anybody else because you know yourself. Proverbs 7, verse 7, is talking about people who are bad at making judgment, wrong, having judgment, wrong judgment. They think they are strong, for example. They can't fall. Ah, here I can, I can manage this one. 
my friend you are like a, a driver who was driving a car on brakes then the brakes worn out and he was going down the hill he applied the brakes but they had worn out they are gone when you stay in a circumstance where you think you are strong but you are tempting yourself you may reach a place where the brakes are worn out that's why you don't stay near a sexually arousing area because then you are, you are still stopping yourself but you are applying brakes the brakes could be out down a hill you discover yourself because ah, i don't know how we ended up in sex i we are both born again we had said never but here you are wrong judgment leviticus 2020 um is when you think the you know other people are not uh, strong and you start feeling like the other things that could um, help you to stand and it's something that you need to to think about as you think about all these people that we are saying are likely very very likely to add up in sex the why am i listing them i'm listing them because in the process when you understand that if you are in that circumstance you need to watch out very clearly you need to know that you could easily fall fall into it and so you watch out because none of these circumstances i'm giving forces you to become immoral it just means it predisposes you but once you are wise and now that you know then you'll be very careful how you how you deal with it you know exeviticus 2020 states if a man has sexual relations with his aunt he has dishonored his uncle they will be held responsible they will die childless <laughs> what is what are we learning people who don't know how to keep boundaries if somebody is your aunt if somebody is your if somebody has no possibility of you marrying them why are you encouraging a relationship to develop that lack of boundaries that can't go beyond that for me that's all even with your own girlfriend because if you end up with sex before the wedding day you will be immoral so why don't you say no we can never go we can never meet in such and such a place agree the rules create boundaries and they will help you you know first corinthians chapter 5 verse 11 we are talking about where where you end up with cover up by a church in other words even if you go wrong there there will be nobody to confront you what that means when people do not confront you with your sin it makes it easier for you to end up in sin and uh, Matthew 5:27 is talking about uh, not taking the mind because the bible is saying if you if you think of a woman lustfully you have really committed adultery if you don't take immorality in the head as serious you will finally end up with actual sexual immorality my friend if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ don't act like an animal on heat you know animals during their 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 mating se- sessions you can't stop it if you i grew up in the rural area and a cow on heat is impossible to manage but you are a human being with controls and the holy spirit will give you the enablement so you cannot add up then being the kind of a person who is going to do things that like an animal all these are a people are, are, are the people who are candidates for immorality if they do not cry to god and walk in wisdom because those are the two things that you, cry to god for his help read his word and walk in wisdom in handling the members of the opposite sex in handling anybody who could easily easily attract you into immorality all that is something that you need to think about so avoid sexual immorality 
all those possessions, dispossessions, I think you should study and think so that whenever you find yourself in one of them, you stop.